Welcome to BN Sports live coverage of the World Cup qualifiers for Russia 2018. It is the final round of qualifying and Argentina's World Cup hopes are on the line. I'm Andres Cordero, joined in the booth by Ray Hudson. Good evening, coach. Hey, Andy, are you ready for some real football? Because the world is watching, not just this game, of course, BN Sports has got them all covered, these wonderful South American World Cup qualifiers. But is there any bigger one than this? Well, around the world, they're looking to see if the impossible can happen. Could Messi in this brilliant Argentina side on their day, World Cup finalists last time, do they even make the World Cup? This is the team that's saying, no, they will not. Ecuador made three changes from the 2-1 loss against Chile on Thursday. Pedro Velasco slots in for the suspended captain Antonio Valencia at right back. Jose Francisco Ceballos makes his qualifying debut in place of Michael Arroyo. And Romario Ibarra takes over from Ayrton Preciado out on the left wing. Meanwhile, for Argentina, Jorge Sampaoli making two changes from that scoreless draw against Peru at La Bombonera on Thursday, as well as a system change from the back four to what looks to be a back three. Enzo Perez gets the nod in place of Ever Vanega, and Eduardo Salvio makes his World Cup qualifying debut as he replaces Papu Gomez. A little bit of pressure on this wonderful player, Salvio, who has been playing brilliantly for Benfica, being thrown a gauntlet and said, pick it up by Sampaoli. Is he going to have enough to turn this team around? and really reignite themselves because certainly Sampaoli has been really lacking and so has his team against Peru. They were wonderful to watch, a multitude of chances and had duck eggs to show for it at the end. Will this be different? There is the Brazilian referee Anderson Taronco, his assistants Alessandro Rocha and Fabricio Villaraño will run the lines. Rodolfo Marquez is the fourth official. And there was that man, Lionel Messi, wearing the captain's armband for Argentina as they play their last card of the 18 match days in World Cup qualifying. Well, it's been a disaster for Ecuador after starting out like a greyhound at the tracks, and they were out of their trap absolutely electrically, but not anymore. They're out, they're dead and buried, but just like Dr. Frankenstein said about his monster, it's alive, it's alive! And these yellow shirts intend to show Argentina that they've got plenty of punch in them. It is a young and domestic-based, mostly domestic-based, Ecuador inside. Missing a few of these stars like Antonio Valencia and Ener Valencia. The latter on the bench today, dealing with a bit of a back injury. The former suspended for this big match. But this countdown to this game has been absolutely enormous. And now it's last chance saloon for Argentina. But with a multitude of algebraic equations, Andres, that I'm sure you'll be giving us as the updates come in with the other games and what happens here. But first things first, business to be taken care of by Argentina and their medicine man, the magisterial Messi. Argentina arrived in Quito today at 11.30 local time, just eight hours before kickoff. Now the moment is upon us. Final round of World Cup qualifying in South America. Argentina in their traditional blue and white stripes, feeling the weight of their own history in the altitude of Quito, nearly two miles above sea level, against an Ecuador inside that is already eliminated, looking to play the spoiler role. Alongside Ray Hudson, I'm Andres Cordero. Thanks for watching the FIFA World Cup qualifiers on BN Sports. Three across the back for Argentina, and includes Otamendi, with Mascherano and Mercado in front of Romero. Salvio, Biglia, Perez, and Acuna across the middle. Messi and Di Maria playing in just behind Dario Benedetto. Ay, ay. Ecuador on the front foot. Oh, he's in! Into the edge of the six! Oh! And the Ecuadorans in front! It's Romario Ibarra! He scored two minutes into his international debut last week. It's Ecuador in front today. Well, the stage truly set now for what looks like a barn burner right out of the traps. Ecuador! Shock the world and catch Argentina. Called. A stunning goal. Again, the weakness in the central defense. Poor clearance here from Mascherano. And then a beautiful took away finish. Sharp as vinegar with his first touch. And he gets it back. A wonderful give and go off the heads. Beautiful control here. Right into stride. And slingshot to the side netting. More mamma mia! 
Well, if the nerves were already shot and the knees wobbly, how's that for a start? Ecuador, in the opening minute, take a 1-0 lead over Argentina, and Romario Ibarra, making his uh, second international appearance, has two goals for the Ecuadorans. Wow, well, the everybody went. just tuning in, do not adjust your set. There's nothing wrong with that scoreline. Hey, let's have it right. Andres, that was a beautifully constructed goal, but I think it was Mascherano with a very, very wobbly piece of defending at the back. And man alive today, capitalised. They were on top of it like Dracula on a plate of liver. And then they got the crowd believing. Oh, giving away into the middle for... Orejuela. We knew this would happen, that Ecuador would come out. They've got nothing to lose against Argentina. Uh, critics around the world thinking that, that this will play into the hands of Argentina. They'll have the space to exploit after being really up against teams that were bunkering in the last three games. Not here. And it was thought that could play into the hands of the Albi Celeste. Not the start they would have wanted is... Uh... Renato Ibarra plays that out. He's the brother of Romario Ibarra, the goal scorer. There's the uh, two Ecuadorian brothers lining up on either side of that uh, midfield attacking trio with Jefferson and Triago in the middle. Here's Otamendi. Argentina could still qualify even if they lose today, but they'll need a series of results to go their way. And the best they can do in that scenario is the fifth place intercontinental playoff. Here's Messi. Shot down in the middle. Oh, taken down no matter by which way you could it, they're going to have to do it the hard way now. No escalator to the World Cup. It's a ladder. You've got to work your way up it. And certainly, you know, Intriago knows that Messi, given any sort of space, will capitalise in his construction or his detonation. Let's see if this one fizzes towards goal. This is an awful long way out, even for Leo. And here is Messi looking to reignite Argentina's campaign oh, toward the ball. penalty spot. Just bouncing in front of Banguera. Mascherano the furthest out in front. Yep. Yeah, they've got a little touch to that one. You kind of blame the altitude about the scoreline. Nothing to do with that either. Again, high quality from Ecuador. And Ray, that was the quickest goal that Argentina have ever conceded in their history. 38 seconds. Yep. They didn't even have enough time to be nervous. It just, as I said, cold as cold as cold as ice. There's Mercado. Was he back for Mascherano? There was some talk Mascherano could return to midfield for this match. And the word was Sampaoli once he heard that uh, Henry Valencia would not start, deciding instead to use Mascherano as uh, the centerpiece of that three-man backline. Is controlled by Arboleda. Four across the back for Ecuador in front of the goalkeeper Maximo Manguera. So Velasco, Aymar, Arboleda, and Ramirez. The back four Orejuela, Ceballos, and Intriago, the midfield trio. The Ibarra brothers, Renato, and Romario are wide. Roberto Ordonez leading the line. Bigly being caught there. And here's Ordonez. Now for Renato Ibarra. Met by Otamendi. Into his ball. Oh, what's a Ordonez could not gather up. Again, finding their way through this back lane and shredding them like confetti with nothing complicated about it. Lovely stab ball across, but again, poorly dealt with. That was Intriago sending it out. Well, should they lose, Argentina would need, uh, in order to finish fifth, which is the best they would be able to do with that result, for both Paraguay to drop points and Peru to lose by a bigger margin than Argentina do. Our players to watch, Roberto Ordonez leading the line for Ecuador. And it's always Lionel Messi for Argentina. Poor pass by Mascherano. He doesn't quite link up with Enzo Perez. And look at the space. Romario Ibarra, the goal scorer. The ball for his brother in the middle. Renato fires, deflected off of Mascherano and gathered up by Romero. Sergio Romero, by the way, now in sole possession of seventh all-time in appearances for Argentina as he passes the you know, legendary Diego Maradona into the sole possession of seventh. Di Maria. Acuna. Otamendi. Oh, 
It's Mascherano to play the ball forward from the back. Slots it in for Lionel Messi. The two Barcelona teammates linking up. Here's Enzo Perez. Leaves it for Messi. Messi blazing a drill into the 18. It's Di Maria across the green, and Benedetto won't get there. A wonderful play. Leo sees Benedetto ahead of him, decides to switch track, plays it outside to Angel. And it's a lovely ball to be attacked at the back. And here's the altitude taken into effect. It's a nicely intended ball, but just a little overweighted with his passing. No friction in the air, Andres, and those balls will carry like a marble on a glass table sometimes. What did you say? And before we went on air, it's very difficult to bend a ball in this atmospheric conditions. Who said that? Famous words of the former Argentina manager Daniel Passarella after losing to Ecuador in Quito. He said, the ball doesn't bend. <laughs> we can't play like this. A wonderful expression, and it's dead right. It was back in 1996, uh, Ecuador in 2-0 win over the Argentines. 2-0 has been a popular score at this stadium. The only Argentine win ever in World Cup qualifying here was 2-0 back in 2001. But they lost 2-0 in the lead-up to France 98, lost 2-0 in the lead-up to Germany 06, and lost 2-0 in the lead-up to South Africa 2010. Well, what this early, early goal has done is set up a situation where the next goal is absolutely crucial probably for both teams under pressure in Triago plays it back for Velasco taking no chances rolls it back for Maximo Banguera Barcelona of Guayaquil goalkeeper something of a star in Ecuador Maximo Banguera played they are looking bright they're Ceballos. looking sharp and they are connecting their football brilliantly, these yellow shirts. Christian Ramirez is Look free. Out. Options inside of the area. Scoop toward the penalty spot, and there was Acuna to put out the fire. And Sampaoli livid. Just his natural state, really. Oh, they look like a team that hasn't won in the last four games, the Albi Celeste. And cannot say that about this Ecuador side uh, playing without any sort of caution free abandon there's Di Maria Di Maria taking it himself takes a deflection it's a yep. corner kick for Argentina nothing in advance for him this time a good quick break oh, why not have a pop at this altitude and certainly see if Leo can adjust his gyroscope to fit the conditions the early goal doesn't change the table. It does change the scenario. Scooped into the sixes. Oh, off the head of Ordonez. Controlled by Di Maria. Here's Lionel. Back to Angel Di Maria into the area. Oh. Back post once more. Wonderful and hit. Samotamendi didn't get there. First touch is beautiful. And he adjusts his balance marvelously. Leo sets him up. Angel onto it. And then that's a wonderful strike. Just can it be met at that back post either. The ball's traveling way too quick for an intended pass. That's certainly intended for that side net and very close. One of your pet peeves as a coach, attacking that back post. Yeah, it's very difficult as well under these situations, but you've got to imagine what if. One of the worst of the what-if scenarios playing out in front of the uh, traveling Argentina yeah. fans. Here's Mascherano. And Steve Mascherano showed too much of the ball to the defense. And Argentina opened up an important tackle by Otamendi. Interception. Orejuela. Plenty of space for the Ecuadorians to play in midfield. This is Ramirez. Ramirez from distance as Romero collects. 11 minutes in. Most of the match taking place over on this side. Acuna. Only his eighth international appearance for the 25-year-old Marcos Acuna. Otamendi. Mascherano. Catapulted into the area looking for Di Maria. An important stop, but a poor clearance has a count bounce for Ecuador. Off the uh, feet of Velasco. 
And quickly slingshot forward. And they were looking to find Romario Ibarra again. He's been a live wire in his uh, brief international career. Biglia, line splitting pass to find Benedetto. Messi collects, absorbing the contact. In for Di Maria. And across the green, it's Messi! Oh, it's him! It's always him! It's 1-1! Messi again, the medicine man pounces! The Pulga becomes a Pulga Atomica! Right out of the sky! Like a ball of lightning, Messi in his construction and in his finish. Wonderful understanding, the chemistry is there between him and Di Maria. Lovely lead ball, Di Maria calibrates his angle, then recalibrates it for Messi to pounce. Beautiful goal, constructed, side foot, left foot magic, and again, the Stratovarius of the left foot comes out on the outside this time. Intelligent play by Angel Di Maria Andres. Changes his mind at the last nanosecond, turns away from the slingshot of that side netting, and lays it on a golden altar for Lionel. Well, it's a lifeline once more for Argentina. All level after 13 minutes. Ibarra the opener, Messi the equalizer. One goal away from number 60 for Argentina's all-time leading goal scorer, who gets his fifth of these World Cup qualifiers. Remember, Lionel Messi missed eight of these 17 previous match days at that brief international retirement. In the event of a draw for Argentina, we would need both Peru and Chile to lose. Chile by more than two goals in their match against Brazil. Cervados it is here that comes through again, and there, I'm not surprised at seeing Jose Cervados go into the book here, his young lad, and he tries to change his mind as he's committing, but his momentum plows through and really wipes out Eduardo. Another 22-year-old Jose Ceballos who is making his uh, World Cup qualifying debut today is one of the young pearls of uh, Ecuadorian football playing domestically at the moment for Liga de Quito. And getting an opportunity today against the Albi Celeste. Here's Di Maria. Di Maria measuring up to the deflection at the edge of the area off the body of Dario Aymar. Certainly got his shooting boots on. Every time he gets receiving under this ball, his first look up is towards the goal immediately, it's his first option, so he, it's a good indicator. He must have had his shooting boots on in practice and fancies himself, Di Maria. Outswinger, back post, but the man he made contact, Messi trying to collect, and it's out the other way as Mascherano scrambling back to get into defensive shape. Arboleda, Romario Ibarra, Ordonez streaking to the edge of the area, Ibarra around his marker, and a heavy cross. A great transition for Ecuador, but Argentina similarly in transition. Had their blue and white shirts back, ultra fast, quick, and good job shutting up that dangerous Ecuadorian counter. Ecuador were early leaders in the qualifiers. Remember, all the way back at the start, they won five in a row, starting with the uh, reverse fixture in Argentina, which they won. They've now lost five in a row, fired their manager, had the interim coach suspended, and they find themselves out of contention, looking to play the spoiler role today. Messi, brilliant control. Messi on his left. Messi needs an opening. Oh, fired in and bang. Banguera gets it out as it's cleared by Ceballos. Good positioning by Banguera. Lionel not able to find that two extra degrees of separation, but beautiful run, lovely triggered shot, well covered by Maximo. Argentina, despite the uh, four games without a win, still in control of their own destiny. So far, he's given away to Acuna. A win today, they can finish no worse than fifth, depending on no other results. They would play the uh, playoff against New Zealand. A little help from other results in Peru and Chile, and they could qualify directly for next summer's World Cup, but they would need to win for that to happen. Looks like it's Jefferson and Diago. It's been given the office to Shepard Messi. Benedetto did not collect with his back to goals. Banguera quickly gets it back in the way. Here's look at this from this wonderful player on the run. And as I said, just unable to get that two degrees. It's a lovely clean hit. 
At that speed, we take it for granted all the time, but wonderful testing of Bangera. Making him work. Acuna. And Milan signing Lucas Biglia, former Lazio captain. Man's in the middle today alongside Enzo Perez. Messi. Back down just at the edge of the attacking third. This is a free kick in Messi territory. Madaleda just making sure that Argentina did not restart quickly. Madaleda leaving his back lane. Centrally and just coming out and clipping Lionel. Nothing too savage. Thinks he can get to the ball ahead of the player. There's been a million like them that think that when that ball's heading into Lionel, but again, makes him look a little silly and leads to this. Now, let's see how he takes the conditions into effect. He'll have practiced them, Andres, but getting that dip on the ball under these conditions. The ball doesn't bend, as yep. Passarella said. Yep. Let's see if he can, he can bend like this guy when he wants to. We'll see. And it's getting handsy inside of the area. I don't go over to have a word. With uh, Gabriel Mercado and the 22-year-old Dario Aymar. Four on the wall for Maximo Banguera. Here's Lionel Messi. Just clips the top of the wall. And a corner kick for Argentina. It's their third. Ecuador was doing enough to get him position and block these dangerous hits from Di Maria and Messi leading to another corner. Been very close to punching the ticket from these set pieces. It's good service. Acuna again back post. Out of danger. Chance to counter for the Ecuadorians with a foul whistled against the Albi Celeste. So Romario Ibarra on the receiving end, the goal scorer. Velasco. Ceballos so taking a patient approach. This is Aymar. Ramirez floats it forward. Mascherano who gets there first. 20 minutes in. The Olympico at the wall playing Quito. Benedetto trying to find Messi. It's found Benedetto. He's picked out Angel Di Maria. Oh, he's Messi in. on his left. It's Lionel. Ah! Messi buries it in the top corner. Me? It's Argentina in front. 1.21 gigawatts of a hit. And Messi says, altitude be damned. This one, hammer home. And now Ecuador are at the broken bottle end of a man called Messi. Stupendously magnificent in the setup. And look at this for an emphatic finish. As smooth as the back of a spoon, and it absolutely has flamed through it past Bangera, who sees this coming at him as a blur. Messi, as tall as a shotgun, and five times as dangerous. Magnificent. Another gangster goal from Lionel. And he is Al Capone tonight. It is his 60th international goal. And that sound you hear is the entire nation of Argentina exhaling for the first time in 20 minutes. The setup leading up to that goal, they looked like a team that had settled themselves. And all credit to them, after going that goal down, they really did settle their nerves as if they were half expecting it. But. How many times, Andres, we'll see it again at half-time, man. That replay of Messi, we take it so much for granted. He's got a multitude of possibilities around him, but the confidence, once he gets it in, all his angles down like hypotenuse and fabulous finish. Ray, he reads the bounce of the ball better than any player I've ever seen. Yep. And with that goal, Argentina move up to... 
third place so, in the World Cup qualifiers on the live table, which would be direct qualification for Russia. And so where he attacks the space as well, the quickness of him, how he sees that pocket of opportunity ahead of him, and then the wonderful control and the separation that he puts between him and the defender. Then all he's got to do is find the angles and the power, which is the biggest challenge. But he makes it look like it's Jack and Jill going up a hill. Marvellous from the medicine man, Messi. Here's Otamendi. Biglia. Here's a look at the uh, live table as uh, Brazil are already through. Uruguay will need a ma mathematical miracle not to make it to Russia. And Argentina, for the moment, in third place, a direct qualifying spot. Strap in, we're going to take a few twists and turns before it's all said and done. More twists and turns in Space Mountain throughout all of these South American World Cup qualifiers. And as you see, Andres, it's far from over. But at least this man has got Argentina pointing in the right direction. And he is playing inspirational football as a captain, Messi. Biglia sends it wide. Salvio. A pass into the middle from Mercado, who has to scramble back into position. Now is Ecuador on the counter, well read by Otamendi. It was Renato Ibarra, who's up. Uh, he was moving quicker than his brain. Mascherano, one or two risky passes from the uh, Barcelona man. Di Maria, bit of afters after the passes of Cunha. Di Maria taken down. Much of a nightmare situation it is, was for Argentina coming into this game and then going down a goal in the first minute. To see Messi having an off night would be a real disaster for them but Messi does not let you down and as I said he's been the co constant agitator for this Argentina side everything going through Lionel and responding brilliantly and now sitting on a hat-trick prior to these uh, final two rounds of World Cup qualifying Sampaoli said Messi had to be near the area where plenty of games previously where Messi was forced to come back into center midfield to help in creation when he's close to the 18, as he has been for Barcelona this season, he is absolutely lethal. Ramirez. Trying to beat Argentina over the top of the defense. Otamendi wise to it. So the ripples sent throughout the table as Argentina climbed to third. Means Chile are fourth. Colombia in fifth for the Intercontinental Playoff as Mascherano still flirting with danger. Acuna. The defibrillator close by. Oh, what a shocker. This one got off right from the door. Look out, Angel. We're allowed to continue. It's Benedetto on attack. Salvio. Oh, twisted and turned his way into danger. Angel Di Maria made a great run for Benedetto there to supply a little slide rule pass down that left side. And Benedetto not having the vision to find him. And I think that's what is. Annoying the boss there. Hey, they went four games without scoring a goal. Save for the own goal against Venezuela. And they've got two in 20 minutes, both off the feet of Lionel Messi. Sliding in Benedetto, putting in the defensive shift, but he's whistled for the foul. Strong center forward of uh, Boca Juniors leading the line today for Argentina. A little too strong in that challenge for Doranko's liking. Let's get uh, the ball, but he needs to clear it down as well in Triago. And so it's Peru who are currently on the outside looking in. They came in holding on to that intercontinental playoff. Now find themselves in sixth place. Francisco Ceballos to deliver. 
And Savanios oh. chipped toward the penalty spot. Flicked on Otamendi. And we've got the last touch. Should be a corner kick for Ecuador. Lovely invitation sent in from the youngster from Quito. Paul Velasco. First corner kick of the match for the home side. Ceballos out swinger. Until with the near post. I Benedetto. Still has some work to do. Oh. But he's bailed out by the whistle as Aymar commits the foul. He wins it, I thought, very, very fairly upstairs in live time. W.O. Aymar. But referee seeing it in a different way. Does the arm come up? We'll take a look at it later. Look out. Meanwhile, look out over at uh, Vicente oh. in Montevideo. It's an own goal as uh, Silva puts it in. And it's 1-0 to Bolivia. Lovely flick on from Moreno. Then it's snap, crackle, pop in a very cruel move there. But Bolivia traveling away. Lovely touch from Moreno. And looks like it comes off. It's been given as an own goal by Gaston Silva, the left back for Uruguay. Meanwhile, free kick for Argentina. Again, a win guaranteed at least fifth place in the playoff against New Zealand, whatever happens elsewhere. And despite the uh, goal down, Uruguay is still holding on to second place. Level on points with Argentina, but a better goal difference. Corojuela. And Chirano is sliding into the rescue. Maybe this one for the foul. This was Biglia that actually comes in at the end. Good hold up play from Odonez there. So the Huela here. It played Messi. For Messi as well. And it's Messi that's, uh, that's coming for the foul. And Jefferson Intriago is in some discomfort. And Messi challenge here. Gets away from him. And that is a nasty challenge. And so Perez comes the, in. Cleet showing in a stabbing action through from the river man, Enzo Perez. And second look at that one, Andres. Really dicing with death with that sort of challenge. The referee could have possibly have reached for the red. Had there been any contact, he was very fortunate to get away with it in the end. Renato Ibarra. Touch pass down here, Maria Biglia getting in the way. Corner kick for Ecuador. who were eliminated after that 2-1 loss in Chile on Thursday, mathematically out of contention. Means they're now missing their second of the last three World Cups. They finished sixth in qualifying for South Africa 2010. Ceballos pulled his spot. Some goal bound, but an easy pick up for Sergio Romero. It's the fullback Christian Ramirez knocked his foot around the ball. Three goals and really absolutely no blame laid on either goalkeeper for sure. Questions about the defending, especially in the Argentina heart, but tremendous response. Half an hour in, the game's flown by. Enzo Perez. Mercado down the line for the right wing back Eduardo Salvio. Took a heavy touch but recovers well, the former Atleti man. Enzo Perez. Nicely. Good combination with Salvio. Di Maria waiting for the pass to the second too late. Finding their pass as well. This is Ordonez into space for the goal score. And Romario Ibarra can't get there ahead of Romero. Here's Di Maria. Had a bright start against Peru as well, did Angel Di Maria, and then fizzled out toward the end of the opening half. Was uh, subbed out for the second stanza. And there was plenty of talk in the week as to whether Angel Di Maria would even start this game. So far, so good for the PSG man. Yeah, he started out well, and really set a standard playing up front, and that lovely link up play with Messi was showing the fangs. 
early on in the going after going a goal down. Biglia. Started the uh, run of Acuna. It's a poor pass in the end, and Banguera gets it away. Antonio is on an island. Connected by Di Maria oh, as he dances past the challenge of Intriago. It's Angel, leaves it for Leo. Messi back to Angel Di Maria. Trying oh. to find the angle, finds the foot of Banguera, and it's a corner kick for Argentina. Yeah, and wonderful understanding, just as I was saying. The promise of magic from these two has always been there, but it's it. Full bloom here tonight, and Maximo Banguera, the Barcelona goalkeeper, comes out, spreads himself beautifully, and cuts it off down. Locks all the passing lanes in towards his goal. That's good goalkeeping from the 31-year-old. Again, wonderful setup by Messi. Seeing that darting run from Di Maria. Fourth corner for the Albi Celeste, delivered. Mercado on target, but an easy grab for Banguera. Relato. No foul, says uh, Taronco. Ceballos. Tries to well find Renato Ibarra. Again, it's Ceballos. Options at the back post. Oh, is it? It's a poor clearance, still at the doorstep. Oh. And it's Biglia who does get it away after a bit of a Very slip from Mercado. Close. Absolutely. That one wriggling free for Roberto Ordonez. And the ball just wouldn't settle for him to just tore poke at home. That one just wriggling free from that area in the Argentine defense, Andres. It's like Swiss cheese. Lots of holes in it and not able to be plugged up. And they're not being exactly dangerous balls in their inventiveness. It's just played into that area. And Argentina having a difficult time coping with it. Collision in midfield. We play allowed to continue. It's Romario Ibarra. Ordonez in the middle. An important interception. Roberto Ordonez telling Romario Ibarra there, just play me in. I don't cause Sadio. havoc, and certainly you can understand why Ordonez is telling his men in that midfield, just play it in. I've got the, I've got a lot to play with here in this back lane against so much space that he's being offered. Swung in near post. Miss Benedetto, a strong header to get it out. Renato catapulted into the area. It's headed wide, but still in possession of Ecuador. Swung in back post. Not taking any chances, Romero. But he cannot corral it. It's a corner kick coming up for Ecuador. Too many times it's Argentine defense. Been looking at sixes and sevens. Here's another example. It's well dealt with by the goalkeeper. Thinks he can get it, but again, all running away off this fast surface in rarefied air. Ceballos swung in. Dangerous ball just bouncing in the heart of the area. Messi leaves it for Di Maria. Mascherano could not get there. Appeals for the offside, and the flag comes up against Romario Ibarra. Exhale. You can count the number of breaths on one hand. He always mild mannered. Jorge San Paoli. Argentina give the ball straight back to Maximo Banguera and Ecuador. And their first World Cup appearance in. Uh, Korea, Japan, 2002. We were bounced in the group stages. Ecuador did reach the round of 16 in Germany, 2006. They were knocked out by a brilliant David Beckham free kick against England. And he managed the group stage last time out. Messi tripped up by Dario Aymar. Namesake of uh, his favorite player growing up, Pablito Aymar. And 
staggering skill, taking that ball out of the air, off of his chest, and by magic somehow, almost willing it down to his foot to turn and then leave the defender left for dead before he's brought down. Messi, two goals already. Leveled in the 13th, put Argentina in front in the 20th. Scoops this one into the 18. Just over the head of Di Maria, collected by Lionel. It's Messi into the edge of the area. A little too heavy for Acuna. Banguera wasting no time and blasting it forward. One goalkeeper to another. Has dropped the uh, deepest of the two center midfielders for Argentina between him and Enzo Perez. Sometimes right in line with the back three. This is settled by Christian Ramirez. Machinado sends it back. Ramirez. Ibarra won't get there, and it's a throw in for Argentina. Even at Benedetto there. And been holding his position tactically very well, Dario Benedetto. And he'll be lasting this game out as well as anybody after playing a lot of his club football in Mexico. At a similar altitude for uh, Club America, yep. the Azteca in Mexico City. It's got to be a factor on his inclusion as you see that Aladdin's cave of Argentina substitutes getting a little warmed up before the half-time whistle. How about the likes of Mauro Icardi? Paulo Dybala, Ever Banega all on the bench for Argentina today. That'll do, yeah. Didia. And the Mercado will leave it for Mascherano. See his uh, role and minutes reduced at Barcelona. Mascherano with the ascension of Samuel Untiti. San Paoli sees him as a uh, defender. Most other Argentine managers would use him as a defensive midfielder. Well, it's been a problem for Argentina for way too long. The emergence of a really top world-class player. Certainly Mascherano has been that in his playing days and arguably still up there. But when you look at the... Remember the great names of Argentina football. We'll always remember the likes of Mario Kempes and Diego Maradona, Batista. But let's not forget the likes of Ayala and Passarella. It's a type of players that have been a little bit missing in action. There's a wonderful look at this fabulous goal. That, 38 seconds in. A uh, wonderful dreamscape that he couldn't have imagined when he went to bed last night. Something you alluded to early. Argentina's last three opponents all taking ultra-defensive approaches to try and frustrate Leo Messi and the Albi Celeste. But to this Ecuadorian side at home, no World Cup to play for. We're looking to put on a show and attack. And speaking of a show and attack, that's Ener Valencia ready to check in. Who is undoubtedly the star man of the players available today. And look out as uh, once again it's Romario, rather Ramirez. Five minutes to play in the opening half. <laughs> Valencia checks in. He replaces Jose Francisco Ceballos, who was making his World Cup qualifying debut, picked up a yellow card in the 14th minute, and makes an exit in the 41st. And Valencia now playing in uh, Mexico with Tigres. He's got five goals in these World Cup qualifiers. He's been dealing with a back injury that kept him out from starting this one. He is fit enough to play at least the entirety of the second half and change. And uh, already mixing things up with Acuna. And Valencia will get a talking to from the Brazilian referee here, Anderson Daronco, as will Marcos Acuna. Valencia missed out uh, altogether on Thursday. And it was a crucial match. 
for the Ecuadorans. Meanwhile, back to the Centenario in Montevideo, where Uruguay have leveled the score at 1 1. It's Martin Cáceres who's on the score sheet for the Celeste. Former Sevilla and Barcelona man has tied things up for Uruguay. And that, of course, would be enough for Uruguay to clinch should that score hold. Benedetto cut offside here. What a moment that is for Martin Castellez, who has been played by injuries throughout his career. Dying embers of a fiery opening half in Quito. And Romario using his body well. Coming up, it's the fourth halftime show. We'll get you all caught up with the World Cup qualifying scenarios across the five matches played simultaneously on this final day. It's a strong from Renato. Cover again from Di Maria. Slick passing there from the home team. Certainly mm -hmm. playing at their best. Andres Sina. Ecuador of late look very, very unsure about themselves and lacking in confidence, but here tonight have certainly come out and really been growling at Argentina with their fast-paced football on the break. That one's gone against Marco Secuña. Here's Ener Valencia. Oh, that tentative lead, isn't it? It is a delicate and fragile lead for the Albi Celeste. Yeah. They've got their heads out in front and looking towards the locker room. Just moments away to find out what San Paoli says. Look out. Well, right now, the action is all over at the Montevideo, at the Centenario in Montevideo. And this is Edinson Cavani, a free header inside the area for the Matador. Matador, wonderful celebration as well. Beautiful setup. Lovely ball played in from Silva. Again, he ain't going to miss them too many times. Lovely punchy header. Again, coming back to take the lead from being a goal down. Foul against uh, Roberto Ordonez here. By the way, that's goal number 10 of the qualifiers for Edinson Cavani, who is the top scorer in the World Cup qualifiers. Closest to him is uh, Felipe Caicedo, who's no longer playing for Ecuador. Level with Alexi Sanchez on seven each, three back of uh, uh, Uruguay's Cavani. It's Romero. Direct approach this time. Salvio catches up with it. Has Messi in support. Just tripped up by Ramirez. It's a free kick that looks an awful lot like a corner. Good player from Eduardo again. This is what we see week in, week out. And Benfica now, but. Atletico Madrid days as well. And he really shone. Started out with Ranus. Good player. Big game to make a debut, Andres, eh? For Salvio. No question, only his seventh international cap and his first on the road to Russia. Into first half stoppage time. Whoa. Swung into the six, just past the head of Otamendi. Oh. Enzo Perez just pokes it free, preventing Velasco from starting a counter attack. Orejuela. And it's Orejuela just taking it away from Di Maria. And Valencia. Looking sprightly, doesn't seem to be suffering any ill effects of that uh, apparent back injury. And that will do it for the opening half. There are games to suffer through and there are games to enjoy. We hope you've enjoyed the first 45 minutes here. It's Ecuador 1, Argentina 2. Being a thriller, just as we expected. But Messi, as if by his sheer willpower, would not be denied and roars Argentina back. The two wonderful goals. As things stand, Uruguay clinching their spot in Russia 2018, while Argentina have moved into third place for a direct spot in the World Cup group stage.
Ford Halftime Show is next. Stay with us. It's Ecuador 1, Argentina 2 at the break. Take a look back at the very best of the opening 45 in Quito. You did not have to wait long for the opening goal, and it's not the way the traveling fans would have expected. 38 seconds, the fastest goal ever scored against Argentina, and it was Romario Ibarra on his second international appearance. It's so early in this game, and Argentina's defense falls apart like six-week-old broccoli. <laughs> Sibara that is the thunder at the end of this lightning attack. But it's beautifully constructed once they see Argentina hesitate. It's beach volleyball, head tennis, but it's a barra that scores and opens it up. And then the medicine man would arrive, setting the table here from Angel Di Maria and getting the ball back. And the finish is as smooth as a trombone slide. But the second one would be even better from Messi as he sees his team clawing this game back wonderful consideration from angel di maria and a lovely goal it wouldn't be long after that messi is onto this one jumping jack flash quick the hesitation was brilliant the hit as well nicely covered in the end from bangera they'd be peppering that net on their drives to get the winner this time it's messi and he peels away from the defense like tissue on a toilet roll and look at this finish it's a flamethrower, a cross between a sledgehammer and a rapier. Wonderful and cleaner than Neutrogena from the man from Argentina. Di Maria on the build-up leaves it for Lionel Messi. Back to the angel who just could not find the angle against Banguera. Well, it was uh, more chances for Argentina, and they've buried two of them off the feet of Lionel Messi. They lead it 2-1. to one. They're inside of the qualifying picture for now. Just 45 minutes left in the World Cup qualifying campaign. Argentina on the inside for the moment as they lead Ecuador two goals to one. A brace by Lionel Messi after trailing 38 seconds in. BNSports.com where you can stream live matches via BN Sports Connect. Follow along on Twitter, BN Sports USA, ESPN Sports for the Spanish handle. Alongside Ray Hudson, I'm Andres Cordero. The second half just about to get underway. Stay with us. You're watching World Cup qualifying on BN Sports. An early goal by Romario Ibarra, a brace response from Lionel Messi. A brace for the second half, just moments away on BN Sports is Argentina playing for their World Cup lives on the final day of South America's World Cup qualifiers. The Express Halftime brought to you by Ford. Second half kickoff is next. Glance across the Corner Bowl landscape where there are goals in just two of the matches. Ecuador trailing Argentina 1-2 in our feature match. All over in Montevideo, it's Uruguay up two goals to one against Bolivia. Having conceded first via an own goal, the Uruguayans battling back. A draw would be enough for Oscar Washington Tabares' men. Well, for the moment, both Brazil already qualified and Chile would be on the inside. Just inside is Colombia currently holding on to that intercontinental playoff against New Zealand. There's confirmation of the standings. Brazil had already qualified with plenty of time to spare. Uruguay were virtually in. Right now they're followed by Argentina and Chile. Colombia still within a shot, but they would have to play New Zealand as things start, while Peru and Paraguay on the outside looking in. But 45 minutes could change the entire footballing history of all of these nations involved. Absolutely, Andres. Well framed. And Argentina fans, there's still that sense of nervousness surrounding this game with that precocious lead, and that single goal, but what a response. And the positive side for Sao Paulo's men, it was an immediate and instantaneous response from going down to the, a goal that really would have taken the wind and the spirit out of a lot of teams under these conditions of immense pressure and expectations but Sao Paulo's men remained calm in the storm and responded because of the number 10 
of course, Messi leading the way and dragging this horse to the water and making it drink. And this team in yellow, man, they still have got a big part to play in this match. The next goal, of course, will be absolutely huge if Argentina can grab it and it would take three goals for Ecuador to get the, the big win. But Argentina look as if they're settled, if they can remain in focus. And certainly with that man looking to be another inspiration. Well, a goal for Argentina could seal it. A goal for Ecuador would send Argentina right back outside yeah. of not just the direct spots, but also the intercontinental playoff into sure. sixth as things stand. Yep, very thin ledge and very high up, and it's a big tight rope that's got to be walked. We knew that coming in, and 45 minutes of Helter Skelter, wonderful South American World Cup qualifiers to be played out here on BN Sports. It's been a tremendous first half. Let's see what the second's got to offer. And it checks for Daronco. And the ball is back in play, nearly two miles above sea level, and the stakes are even higher. It's Argentina up two goals to one, two goals by Messi after Romario Ibarra's opener, 38 seconds in. Here come the host through Ramirez. Square ball in, looking for Ener Valencia, and it's instead picked up by Eduardo Salvio. Alongside Ray Hudson, I'm Andres Cordero. Thanks for joining us on the final day of the 18 rounds in South America's Marathon World Cup qualifiers. Two years in the making, four and a half spots into the 2018 Russia World Cup. A little bit of misunderstanding there between Salvio and Messi. Messi was looking, he played Salvio down on that side and was looking for the immediate first time ball back. Not going to get that chemistry too quickly in situations like this. And Sampoli will have plenty of time to work on that. Salvio's had an up and down game in this game for me. Best player of the first half for Ecuador, right? Well, I, I, I like the way um, Ordonez was shaping up, and he was certainly the threat to their team. And the service wasn't forthcoming. You see him getting a little bit more frustrated, but he felt as if he had the handling of that back three for Argentina. It was very impressive to me in, in his approach to the blade but he's got to be served better service if he's going to make anything of this. But as a team, I thought they looked pretty sharp and certainly full of threat when they went forward. Certainly not an underdog team that's laying over and getting their belly rubbed by Argentina. There's still a long way for the Albi Celeste to go to claim these full three points. Here's Biglia. And wide for Acuna in his stride for Angel Di Maria as Benedetto makes the run, Good sliding run. in Dario Aymar. And a corner kick for the Albi Celeste. Good sharp run by Angel, pointing the way in the directive. And the ball played in from Marcos Acuna. Well protected. And a win is enough for at least fifth place for Argentina, but they go directly if either Peru and Colombia draw or Chile drop points. Scramble at the heart of the area. This is not against Otamendi. And in fact, both of those results are currently playing out in favor of uh, Argentina. Peru and Colombia are drawing, and Chile also drawing with uh, Brazil. are dropping points. Maximo Banguera gets things back underway. Interesting life story for the uh, Ecuadorian goalkeeper who uh, left home to try and make a footballing career in Quito and was going hungry as a teenager. Living in Quito, would have to play in neighborhood tournaments for about $10 just to have food to eat. And trying to make his way as a professional footballer. Says Ramirez just getting away from Mercado. Sharp. Christian Ramirez, dangerous ball in. Acuna deals with the danger. Controlled by Ener Valencia. It's that electric sharpness of this Ecuador side. It's not been too careful with that final pass, but man, they can get into the spaces and play the balls in through those passing lanes and turn this Argentine defense around time and time again. Di Maria muscled off the ball. 
That time by Pedro Velasco. It was a big hallmark of this Ecuador side in the first four games where they looked as if they were turbocharged and led the whole South American group. They won five in a row to start things in the first four. They got goals from Felipe Caicedo, who's no longer yeah. taking part in the national team. Yeah, he retired after the coach got fired. But it was that sharpness about them that they looked as if their qualifications might look like a walk in the park for them, but it went badly wrong. Tackle. Mercado stepping up. Yeah. Here's Messi. Quickly crowded by yellow shirts. Messi has the ball in his string. He's dispossessed. The tackle from Romario Ibarra. Line past Mercado, brought down by Mercado. A free kick coming up for Ecuador. That's the look of a man you don't want to mess with, this referee. Mercado clatters into Romario Ibarra. Second international appearance for Romario, the younger brother of Renato Ibarra, man in the other wing. He scored two minutes into his international debut on Thursday. He scored 38 seconds into today's match. Yeah, he'll be saving that video cassette for the rest of his life, that's for sure. Nicely. Good touch. Again, scrambling back in defense was Acuna. And it's Acuna who goes in the referee's book. Yeah, rightfully so. This is wonderful dexterity down this side. And... Wonderful from Renato Ibarra. Lovely touch right there to squirt around the defender. Beautiful, but then, not questionably, Akuna taking him down and probably doing the right thing. Second yellow of the qualifiers for Marcos Acuna. If Argentina do have to play in the intercontinental playoff against New Zealand, he would miss the opening leg. Five minutes gone in the second stanza. Just one on the wall for Romario, excuse me, for Romero. There's Ordonez against Mascherano at the back post. Driven in near post. There's Roberto Arboleda who was closest to it. He'll do it again, this time from the corner flag. It was, by the way, Acuna who gave that ball away and had to scramble back and commit the foul. Renato Ibarra, in swinger, Mercado looks it skyward. Salvio in a foot race with Romario. Nicely cleaned up by Ramirez. Sprayed wide by Orejuela. And a lapse in concentration. Well, Di Maria will not get many plaudits for that, but that's wonderful pressure applied, and that's why it wasn't able to be controlled. Daniel Di Maria working back in defense really well. It's not his game, but he's needed tonight. He's doing a yeoman's job. So Ordonia is in a battle with Acuna. Acuna signals toward the referee's assistance and gets the call to go his way. By the way, the man you saw throw the ball back onto the pitch, that's Patricio Lara, who is uh, managing Ecuador today. Jorge Celico, the interim manager, suspended for this match after an altercation with Arturo Vidal in that lost to Chile. He found out about the suspension hours before kickoff today. And so it's the uh, right-hand man, both in the national team and at his uh, club, Ucatolica in Ecuador, Patricio Lara, who is managing Ecuador on this uh, final match day. Celico will not uh, be returning to Ucatolica, and there's plenty of talk that uh, Lara will be taking over the club duties. And Celico will take over the under-20 side of Ecuador. This is Christian Ramirez. Ordonez. Again, lovely hold-up player. Good player. And Romario trying to find Ener Valencia again. It's Ordonez. Valencia oh, trying nicely. to get away from Mascherano into the area. Valencia with his back to goal. Ramirez. But the men be coming to the rescue there. Under Valencia. And kept in play by Pedro Velasco. Good start back to Argentina. the second half, hasn't it been, from... Latri, 
certainly sent out by their coach with fire in their eyes and being very well look out. Over to Sao Paulo where on this uh, free kick it's Paulinho pouncing on the loose ball in Brazil in front. That's good news for Argentina. Yep. Good news for Barcelona fans as well. Man's in a lovely goal scoring groove and this one too hot to handle from Neymar. Nice run. Here comes Ecuador. Nice time tackle by Otamendi. Good play. Good work to do in defense as the ball comes in near post. And Romero collects. That's Pedro Velasco who's becoming a handful on that far side. Also good news for Colombia who jumped back into the direct qualifying places. Colombia now in fourth place with uh, Chile in the Intercontinental Playoff as they trail Brazil 1-0. Messi is brought down by the challenge from Jefferson Orejuela. No rest for the weary or the wicked. Which is which? Yeah, he can be both. And certainly he's going to have to regroup himself. Got a hard game here on Beyond on Sports on Saturday when he travels to Madrid to face Atletico. So he gets as tough as anything for Leo. First trip to the Wanda Metropolitano for Barcelona and Messi. Yeah, what a stadium. Di Maria putting in a shift to try and get there. Goal kick for Maximo Banguera. Look how quickly the ball comes out. If you think it's a meaningless game for Ecuador, they want to beat Argentina. Meanwhile, two goals in quick succession over in Sao Paulo, as uh, this time it's Gabriel Jesus to double the lead for the Verde Amarela. Beautifully set up as well, isn't it? Wonderful long distance ball. Split millimeter perfect for Neymar, who sets the table for his teammate, Jesus. And again, that also works in Argentina's favor because should Ecuador score a goal, Argentina would need for both Peru and Chile to lose. Chile by two goals or more. Rodonia is slow to get up. There's a look at the live table. Colombia have crept back in. Amazing job you're doing, Andres, keeping this wonderful, your wonderful eye on this calculus that is taking place before us and in all of the other games, one goal can make all the difference and leave you scratching your head. What does X equal? But right I'll now... Scratch my head once it stops spinning. <laughs> yeah. Otamendi gets it back underway. Looking for Benedetto, who's been a start for service in this second half. Oh, well played. Oh, brilliant through the legs of his marker, Renato. And so Perez leaves it off for Biglia. The game for him the weekend there. as well, Lucas Biglia. The Derby de la Madonina coming up on oh. Sunday. Enter against Milan. What a day in, la Liga, in Serie A. Here's Di Maria. Move it around Velasco. A bit of help from Renato Ibarra. And the kick in for the corner. That's Aymar who settles. Few nerves for the 22-year-old uh, Dario Aymar. He was uh, at least partly to blame on both Argentina goals. Yeah. A giveaway and at one moment just completely lost Messi. Biglia is upended by Renato Ibarra. There's a look, still no goals between Peru and Colombia. That still would be enough for Colombia, while Peru for the moment would be in the intercontinental playoff against New Zealand. Uruguay would be qualified. Chile would be on the outside. Sixth place for Chile at the moment. The two-time defending South American champions could miss out on the World Cup. Here's Mercado. Oh, he's dispossessed. And it's Romario Ibarra trying to make it two. Ibarra square ball toward this spot. And there was Otamendi to put out the fire. Enter Valencia salivating. Uh, words, severe words getting exchanged in that back lane. And Otamendi comes to the rescue of Romero. Wonderful covering from the Man City man. Having real verbals directed towards Mercado there. And nearly a costly giveaway. Approaching the hour mark, safe corner kick for Ecuador. Here's Christian Ramirez, the Krasnodar man, to deliver. Now swinger toward this spot, and it was Arboleda who was rising to meet it. Renato. Under pressure from Angel Di Maria. And it will be a throw for Ecuador. 
Well, let's go to Peru, where we got the first goal over at the Estadio Nacional, and it's Colombia in front. The goal for James Rodriguez, the new Bayern Munich man. Oh, pounces on it immediately again. Jumping Jack Flash. James gets through on the keys, and he drives the ball home from here. Wonderful opportunities. It is presented to him, and he was very, very sharp as Vinegar. So that does move Colombia back into the direct qualifying places, ahead of Argentina in third place. The Albi Celeste dropped the fourth, and it's Chile now in the Intercontinental Playoff. And so Perez is brought down in midfield. Free kick here for Argentina. You wouldn't know it from the two early goals today by Lionel Messi, but Argentina just 16 goals scored through 17 match days in World Cup qualifying. The second fewest behind only Bolivia. And they scored the fewest goals at home of any team in the South American qualifiers. That is absolutely staggering when you look at the wealth of talent available as well. But that's been well documented here tonight. It's been all reliable. Lionel. Here's the confirmation is, uh, again, Brazil already qualified. Uruguay would be through Colombia and Argentina directly. Chile against New Zealand for that half ticket to Russia. And that would leave Peru and Paraguay out. Plucky Peru? Certainly. Great. And that Gareca has been absolutely wonderful. Messi. Acuna. There's Lionel. Mostly marked Lionel Messi. And dispossessed. Breaking out on the corner. Biglia forced to be a card. Commit the foul, and Lucas Biglia goes in the referee's book. Covering for Lionel Messi this time. It's a little bit... Well, got his own pocket pick this time. Messi trying to dance his way out of it, but wonderfully robbed. And certainly, Ibarra was going to take full advantage before Biglia stepped in. Human roadblock. It's good pressure from Orejuela, who would not let Messi's pass through. For Biglia, that's uh, four yellow cards, so if Argentina do fall into the Intercontinental Playoff, he would miss out the opener against New Zealand. Here's Otamendi, and leave it for Romero. Mm. Well, urgently pressing on the, this Ecuador side in search of this equaliser as the tired, hot lungs of Argentina probably now are starting to burn given the conditions, and this is where Ecuador usually gets stronger. Again, not just a domestic-based or strongly domestic-based side, but from domestic clubs that play at altitude yeah. for Ecuador. And a fragile lead for Argentina. And that's the decision some Pelis have to make. Look out. Here comes Messi. It's the overlap from Benedetto. It's Messi! Patrick for Lionel! And that could be the one is Argentina's ticket Again, to Russia. Genius! Nothing less than absolute genius from the man from Argentina who again is cleaner than Neutrogena. Stupendously magnificent Messi and this is nothing less than witchcraft football from the sorcerer of football. Messi again. Beautiful control. And the defense are left chasing him like Tom chasing Jerry, and they are never going to catch him. This is stupefyingly magnificent from Messi. He chips it home. They think they've got him covered. They think they've got him on the ropes. And that's when he loves it. He loves it. And he leaves Ecuador's defense in acid with pure messy magic. We look at it again and again. The hat trick, they'll be cutting down forests in Argentina to write the papers about Lionel's night. Lionel Messi, Lionel, and he roars them back. The king of the jungle, the king of Argentina. He is off to some start. 
this season. That's 17 goals in 15 matches for club and country. A hat trick today for Lionel Messi in the second substitution of the match for the hosts. Well past the hour mark now. A two-goal cushion for Argentina. Thought he was going to slingshot it low, and I thought he was going to do the same with his second, and he went high. This time, he gets that Stratovarius out again and plays a chip shot better than Tiger Woods ever did with his sand wedge. Absolutely amazing finish from Lionel. It's Michael Estrada, the 21-year-old of Independiente del Valle, who was uh, checked in as the second sub for Ecuador. The traveling fans, they'll not need an airplane to get back home to Buenos Aires. Meanwhile, back to the Centenario where uh, Uruguay have now made it 3-1 against Bolivia. That's Luis Suarez with the finishing touch. Well, that's sharp finishing from a man that is supposedly going to require surgery on that leg eventually. Well, Uruguay are dancing. They know that they're through. They were virtually through at the start of the day. It would have taken a mathematical miracle to get them out. So as things stand, Brazil, Uruguay, Colombia, and Argentina directly to Russia. Chile to the playoff. Peru and Paraguay out. Well, we've seen it, Andres. This Argentina side with the wealth of talent up front, uh, like a very expensive bottle of champagne being shaken, and, and it took Messi for them to go pop. Still got a lot of work to do, San Paoli, unquestionably. But now, if this holds, and this is going to take a lot from Ecuador to respond now, but. San Paoli will have the benefit of time to put more time and effort into his team after inheriting a side that were very, very shaky. Third different manager for Argentina in this World Cup qualifying campaign. Here come the Albi Celeste again, it's Benedetto. Started under Tata Martino. It was replaced by Edgardo Bauza. It's now Jorge Sampaoli, the third different manager. There's a look across the Comebol landscape. And in fact, in Asuncion, the only game that is still scoreless. Paraguay did come into this round with a pretty good chance. In fact, better odds than Argentina to qualify. But they need a win and some help. Back to our feature match. The Olimpico Atahualpa. In the altitude of Quito. Place for Argentina. Take a look at it again. The wonderful control. Again, the options are seen. He says, oh. I see you, I don't need you. And the audacity of this finish. I think Messi gets a tambourine out of his back pocket and starts to play it. I'm telling you, man, he could kick a tin down an alley and it would make music. Maria. Trolled all the way back to the defense, Mascherano. Good, Good ball. ball into the area for Messi. Squared into the edge of the six. Benedetto could not get there. Yep. Lionel immediately apologizing to Dario there for not putting a little bit more on it. Dario says, I do forgive you. The familiar chant, they are not worthy, translated into one word, Messi. Messi drives it in. Just touched away by Orejuela. Sent back across the green, cleared once more by Ecuador, now trying to turn the fence into attack. It's a bit too heavy for Romario Ibarra. There is the live table, Argentina. Two points clear of Chile. Very direct train to Moscow. And Colombia's inspiration, the ex Envigado man, Hamas Rodriguez, playing his hero's part. Whenever you want the response answered, 
turned towards the class. Benedetto trying to link up with Salvio. And it's ushered out for a goal kick. Credit hard Ecuador this game. Still with plenty to be played out, but man alive, did Ecuador ever make this game <laughs> more than interesting? And again, South American World Cup qualifiers sending shocks in this wonderful bottleneck. There's going to be some heartbreak in some widely, of the countries as well, Andres. Widely regarded, Ray, as the uh, most difficult World Cup qualifying oh. process, process of any of the continents. But this year in particular, yeah. coming into the final round with basically only Brazil and Europe qualified. So much to play for on a final match day. And such big nations on the outside. 20 minutes left in Quito. Argentina always expected to qualify, but the World Cup dreams nearly turning into a nightmare. Velasco. Mario Aymar. Ramirez. Mario Ibarra just losing his footing, but Ecuador keeping possession through Ramirez. And Valencia. Ibarra slow to get up. Cintriago who switches it over for the other Ibarra. Renato, the older brother. Not able to link up as Messi doesn't reach it. Ramirez. Orejuela. Argentina struggling to win the ball back from Ecuador at the moment. Holding their shape in defense. And Triago. This is good ball movement from the host, Ramirez. Has been since this second half started. And Valencia measuring up. It's blocked by Enzo Perez. Another one. Oh, yeah. Arms away from distance. And off by a long way. Here's goal number three for Lionel. Look at it time and time again. Look at how he, he talked about it earlier. He takes the bounce of the ball. He adjusts it in the blink of a bee's eye. That ball's bouncing. He knows he's got to get such incredible dexterity of touch on it. He doesn't go for this follow through. He goes for an absolute stroke like an Olympic swimmer. And it's smooth as a trombone stave. I mean, that is a staggering piece of skill. Again, he calibrates and then he recalibrates in such an astonishing blink of an eye. And it's not accidental, Andres. When we look at that again and again, you see the adjustment of Messi on that bouncing ball. And then to flight the ball over the top of the keeper uh, is true football and genius. Well, Sampaoli just about ready to make his first substitution. That's Leandro Paredes. A former Roma man who made a move to Zenit St. Petersburg in the Russian Premier League this summer for 23 million euro. And he could be in line to make his uh, World Cup qualifying debut. And so Perez, Di Maria and for Benedetto. Got his way through, and Messi left Maria before. Yeah, and a poor touch Benedetto. by Dario. Well played. Turned by Di Maria, it's deflected off of Velasco. Here's Acuna. Fires it in. Slipped as he delivered. Been messy, sure, of course, but there's been some great supporting roles. Benedetto has played his part, taking away certainly a lot of the attraction from the forward play of Argentina. He's been attracting a lot of attention, and Di Maria as well. Been wonderful in support and working back. Biglia had a better game than he has done for a long, long time. Salvio Nakuna giving the width to that attack, but also covering back very nicely, Andres. It's uh, Romario Ibarra who gets taken down by Lucas Biglia. Biglia who picked up a yellow card in the 61st. Maybe a bit fortunate, it's only a free kick. Both he and that Marcos Acuna have been booked. Of this Brazilian referee. Jose Francisco Ceballos, the only player with a yellow for Ecuador, but he was subbed out in the 41st minute, replaced by Enel Valencia.
all catapulted in. Valencia was closest to it. It's picked up by Ramirez. Picks out Enzo Perez, driven in and deflected off of Salvio. Oh, it's Acuna who had come over to the opposite side on the corner. Ramirez, outswinger near post. There's Benedetto again. His defensive headers have been very good. And now Di Maria on a one man counterattack. He gauged that bounce beautifully. Oh, Maria gets past his man. They're appealing the ball went out. Play allowed to continue. It's Benedetto chasing it down. Lucky, wonderful play from Angel. Salvio. Mercado. Not the most comfortable ball back from Enzo Perez. He's clipped through the back as well. Free kick for Argentina. Here's another look at uh, whether the ball crossed the line. Ah, that one was in all day. That's wonderful hope. This poke this by Di Maria. San Paoli saw it and said, Vamanos, muchachos. And a wonderful ball, a switch of play to nearly find Benedetto on that far side. There's that last player, the clip coming through. Here's Estrada, the latest substitute, the man who came in for Roberto Ordonez, like for like. He's now leading the line, or was for Ecuador. And Valencia, the furthest forward at the moment. Mascherano, shipped to the edge of the area, strong from Enzo Perez. Quarter of an hour left. As things stand, Argentina are going directly to Russia. Sampaoli wants to make his first substitution. Well, Ecuador will make their last. It's Maru Icardi who will check in for the Albi Celeste. And he'll replace Dario Benedetto up front. I thought the Boca Juniors man played a real good part in this game. Attracting a lot of attention from Ecuador's back line. Wasn't lazy, wasn't any hit me point man. There was good movement from the big man. And they appreciate that, and here comes a different kettle of sharks in the shape of Mario Riccardi. On the other side, it's the Cuenca winger, Johnny Uchwadi, who checks in. It's his World Cup qualifying debut, and only his second international cap, as Ecuador exhausts their third and final substitution. And Jefferson in Triago, the central midfielder, is the man who makes way. Ecuador, who started the match with three central midfielders, Orejuela, Ceballos, and Intriago. And only Orejuela remains. Believe it or not, it could make for an even more open final few minutes. Orejuela gathers up in front of Lionel Messi. Orejuela forward into space. Mendy ready to close it down. Renato Ibarra did not have the legs. For Mardo Icardi, only his fourth international appearance. He's still a young player at 24 years old, but already Capo Canonieri in uh, Serie A a couple of seasons back when he shared the scoring title with Luca Toni. Messi, Di Maria, Enzo Perez. This is Salvio. Risky pass back for Biglia. That's just enough to get it to Mercado. Here come the Ecuadorians through Ramirez. Not to gain a lot of ground, Christian Ramirez. Romario. Ramirez. Left foot across toward the penalty spot. It's fired over by Estrada. Uh, Michael sees this one coming directly at him. He's got a lot of adjustments to do. Would have been an absolute sparkler of a goal and Miguel Estrada being able to adjust himself quickly beautifully picked out but that's a tough header to make not the Mendy yep just behind that's good mark and getting enough of a lean into him and 
no real rush for Romario. There is a Salico, the usual, or the interim coach in any case. Meanwhile, a massive goal in Lima, Peru. Oh, from a free kick, Peru tied up against Colombia, 1-1 would move Peru back into the intercontinental playoff at the expense of South American champions Chile. It's Paulo Guerrero, who just missed a sensational goal against Argentina last week, scores the goal that could send Peru to Russia. Guerrero taking his inspiration from my old teammate Teofio Cubias. That was out of Cubias's book for sure. Beautiful strike. Presenter Valencia now to turn. Just so, running out of room, and he's rolled it out to Tromar, uh, Romero's goal kick. Well, Peru were on the outside looking in, but that goal to make it 1-1 moves them into fifth place and knocks out their arch rivals, classical and Pacifico rivals, Chile. Oh. Meanwhile, Luis Suarez has his second for the Celeste as Uruguay now well in control against Bolivia, four goals to one. Well, Messi's best mate, and he'll be having a good drive back home in some luxury jet with Lionel, probably. <laughs> and happy days for Suarez, and leading the charge again. Wonderful finish. Ten minutes to go in Quito. A good ball. Just over the head of Di Maria. Ten minutes go over for Renato Ibarra. Sends it into the area. It wasn't intended for Uchuari. But he's the man who got the touch. It was deflected on its way through off of Acuna, but then it touched Uchuari. Remember, Argentina lost to Ecuador by two goals on match day one of the qualifiers back in October 2015 when the long marathon kicked off. A couple of late goals by Fruxin Eraso and Felipe Caicedo, both in the final nine minutes. We're into the final nine minutes now. Acuna tripped up by Renato Ibarra. Acuna does well to rescue Sergio Romero's bad clearance from a dead ball situation. And again, good cover. And Acuna. And it runs out your legs. Well. And certainly. Knew what he was doing, Renato Ibarra. Yeah. He catches the hamstring of Acuna. One of the real head scratchers regarding Argentina has been the lack of attacking fullbacks. The likes yes. of a Dani Alves, a Marcelo, a Felipe Luis. Sure. And Salvio and Marcos Acuna as wingbacks getting the job done today for São Paulo. This is Romario Ibarra. Lunging challenge from Mercado. Yeah. Beautiful time for Gabriel, and does it again, and leads it to Messi. I see, dispossessed, but foul. Oh, that's a heavy challenge from the back. And this one is a machete coming out, and how oh, this one is in a yellow card, I'm not so sure. And live time, looked like it was pretty cynical. Take a look again, man, alive. That one is heavy, hard, intentional from Romario Ibarra. Reaching around Messi and gets the ball, but he's got to come through Lionel to get it. And the referee, Doronko, could not be in a better spot to see it. Oh, man, that was heavy. Meanwhile, he's been warming up for a while. He's about to make his World Cup qualifying debut, Leandro Paredes. Scored on his international debut, but so did everyone else in that match. It was a 6-0 win over Singapore in a friendly. In which... Uh, Sampaoli rolled out that uh, famous 3-3-3-1 formation. You see those types of challenges. And it's Di Maria that's needing even more reaction than Lionel did. But you see those sorts of challenges that came on from Ibarra onto Messi. And in slow motion, it doesn't do it justice, of course. That is a calamitous challenge through the back of Messi. And this man, Sampaoli, in line to pick up his first win at the helm of Argentina. Three official matches with his native Albi Celeste. All three were draws, and Argentina had not scored via an Argentine player in any of them until Messi's hat-trick today. Hmm. An own goal by Felcher against Venezuela, the only goal of the Sampaoli era before. So Di Maria's replaced as Leandro Paredes checks in for his World Cup qualifying debut. 
in his second international appearance. Ray, a lot of the talk prior to kickoff was about whether Di Maria would and should start. Yeah. Some talk that Sampaoli was being talked out of Di Maria starting from yeah. within his own coaching staff. How did he perform today? I thought he played wonderfully well. And it was definitely a big change up of gear. His touch was wonderful. His involvement with Messi was certainly influential throughout that first half. And now he answered the bugle as have done a number of the blue and white shirts here today. Another goal. Well, oh, this is bad news for Paraguay. We go to the Defensores del Chaco in Asuncion. And Venezuela have taken a 1 0 lead. The Vino Tinto already eliminated today. <sighs> Again, what a near down. Nothing lucky about this wonderful goal of our team that has played for their country. A real statement of a national team saying we won't back down, we will never die. Sweet and Venezuela game. again coming out and shocking everybody. I think they've been playing some wonderful football in defeat, Andres Venezuela. And man alive, showing up heroically for their long-suffering citizens of Venezuela. Well, nothing to play for except their entire nation, yep. despite already being eliminated. That was Yangel Herrera who had scored for Venezuela. Meanwhile, Bolivia would pull one back here. It's the second own goal for Uruguay today. That one comes off of Godin. Godin was very close to the first one as well for that own goal. So a little bit of bad luck from Diego, who Lionel will be facing up to at the weekend here on BN Sports in a fantastic game at that amazing stadium at the Wanda. Luis Ramirez is oh. rather the substitute. Uchuari oh, is into a wall in midfield. He's down and slow to get up. A fast moving wall, Andres, and Mascherano deserves that one. So Look as at this, stand, as the ball's still... played past Mascherano, <laughs> he's just human roadblock, misses the ball entirely. Well, to give you an idea of what you're watching is Paraguay nearly equalized there, still on the front foot, but in <coughs> fact, oh, just catching the crossbar. The Guarani side to try and level. Meanwhile, as things stand, it's still Chile and Paraguay on the outside, Peru in the Intercontinental Playoff, and Uruguay, Argentina, and Colombia following Brazil directly to the World Cup. Four minutes to change that in Quito. Put it back across the grain for Estrada. And it's picked up by Messi. And he's in the back of his head. And Valencia has won it back. Messi whistled for the foul. Argentina won only two of the previous 10 World Cup qualifiers. They've beaten Colombia and Chile. Picking up just 11 of a possible 30 points over that stretch. They'd won only two of eight away during this entire World Cup qualifiers. Also against Colombia and Chile. Not delivered into the area. The trend is sender. Lionel. Dancing with Enter Valencia. And the telepathic leader just short circuiting for Messi. Left Sevilla back in May to take over his beloved Argentina, San Paoli. He replaced Edgardo Bauza. Bowser, by the way, will be at the World Cup, whether Argentina make it or not. He's there with uh, Saudi Arabia, who have already qualified. Here's Romario Ibarra. And the fly past Enzo Perez. Thrown back by Salvio. But a throw for Ecuador. A long bursting night for Salvio. Hasn't seen too much of the ball in threatening positions, but man alive, as you alluded to earlier, Andres is being tactically very shrewd, working that night shift down that right side, up and down, covering that area, but to good effect, Argentina. Neymar. Arboleda. Valencia rolls it back for Arboleda. This is Ramirez. Scoop to the edge of the area for Estrada, who bats it down. Chased down by Enter Valencia. Again, it's Valencia. Trying to get around Paredes. 
Side steps the tackle from Biglia. Pressure again from Biglia. And Valencia just tripped up. Now the Milan midfielder. Argentina holding on for now to what would be just their second ever win in Quito. They won here in the lead up to Korea, Japan 2002, back in August of 2001 under Marcelo Bielsa, with goals by Juan Sebastián Verón and Hernán Crespo. And this has not been a happy hunting ground otherwise. Meanwhile, it looks as though uh, Eduardo Salvio will make way, and that's uh, Federico Fazio, who's revived his career playing at Roma in a back three. Looks as though he'll come in Such as the third and final sub. Real industrious performance as much as a magical performance for sure. There's nothing too fancy today about Eduardo Salvio. We see his wonderful scintillating sparkle at Benfica nowadays, but it was a different element needed tonight, and I think Eduardo Salvio did not let his team down. Well, delivered toward this spot, there was Mercado. The likelihood now is that Mercado will play the, ring, the right wing back role. Oh, yes. The ball is always rising well over the crossbar. Argentina have time to breathe. So all three subs exhausted by Sampaoli. Icardi, Paredes, and Fazio brought off the bench. No role for Paulo Dybala today. His Juventus have a big match against Lazio at the weekend. Which you can watch on BN Sports Connect. Yeah, that's the league this weekend on BN Sports. Apart from the great Atletico Madrid, Barcelona showdown. Uh, Sorry, yeah, there's some absolute Chinese firecrackers of games all lined up on the connect. As well as the one I just mentioned, there's also Roma against Napoli. Yeah. And of course, Inter against Milan. It's not over yet in Quito. Oh, catapulted to the edge of the area again, Estrada rising. But so is the ball. Nice target he's been tonight. And He's coming in, he's showing some threat, and nicely picked out, but a little too heavy, nicely covered in between by blue and white shirts. Well, this one looks it's been put to bed with three Lionel Messi hot water bottles, and again... Well, meanwhile, back to Sao Paulo. It's now three for the Brazilians against Chile, who again are on the outside of the qualifying picture, and this adds insult to injury as Gabriel Jesus walks it in for his second of the match. Well, pushing up suicidally high, and the goalkeeper as well. But Chile looking to get something of a miracle, but the salt being rubbed into the wounds of sad Chile, the South American double champions Chile who waited their entire lives for that one first international trophy they got it in 2015 with Jorge Sampaoli at the helm they beat this Argentina on penalties in 2015 repeated the feat in the centennial edition which included CONCACAF nations in 2016 and the two-time defending South American champions are currently outside of the World Cup here's Messi Paredes can shoot from distance, but it is squeezes it in for Icardi, trying to round the goalkeeper. Oh. It's wide. The what flag stayed down. It would have counted. I think it's Vanguera that gets the save, Andres, if I'm not mistaken. Wonderful amount from Icardi. Slipperier than an eel covered in Vaseline. He is. Beautiful run. And there's a dagger ball played in. And then he's in between. That's a brilliant save from Vanguera. Covering, stretching his fingernails brilliantly. And saying to Wakari, you shall not pass. And there's the jubilant, emotional, volcanic celebration on the sideline of the Argentina bench. You can see Russia from here. You must live in Alaska. <laughs> the final seconds at the Olympic Atahualpa. Argentina came into this match outside of the qualifying picture. They find themselves in third place. A hat trick by Lionel Messi after trailing just 38 seconds in. Paredes. On a corner kick for Argentina. 
This could take up whatever time is left. And they're dancing in the altitude. And there's the final whistle. Argentina headed to Russia 2018 via direct route.